releases from the months of August to February. And, you know, I've been dragging my feet, but the time has finally come. Tonight we're going to be looking into how to play the game of American football. All the ins and outs, like what the objective of the game is, what all the positions are, uh, some basic strategy, the field, the equipment, uh, and all that. So, if you are an international viewer and you have been desperately trying to understand what I am rambling on and on about in these videos, or if you are just interested in the sport of American football and you have never gotten the chance to, you know, experience it at the ground base level, no one has explained it to you and you don't really have anyone to watch it with, then this can maybe act as a guide to give you some context as to what's going on and hopefully give you an, a very nice introduction to a sport that you enjoy watching going forward. So, please sit back, relax, and let's learn how to play football. If you're not familiar, this is what in American football will look like. It is a round, oblong shape. skin or leather and uh, you'll usually find these white laces on one of the seams and so the way that a football is thrown is people will grab the football and keep their fingers on the seams at least this is how I do it I like to put my middle finger on the bottom most seam and the other ones on just further down on the laces and then uh, I place my index finger is where 
because if I don't get the first down within those four attempts, the ball will be given to the other team. So, first down, let's say I pass the ball and I get five yards. So now it will be second and five. Then let's say I try and run the ball and I pick up two yards. That means it will now be third and three, meaning it's third down and I have three yards left to go. And let's say, for the sake of this, on third down I pass and I get five yards. That means I have succeeded in passing what I needed to get to the first down marker. The first down marker does not move until you cross it. So I needed, it was third and three and I picked up five yards. So five yards from where my offense was playing from, that will be the new, uh, like a reset point in 10 yards from there will be my new first down marker. So it's called converting. Uh, I was able to pick up the first down essentially and I am given a new set of downs in a new marker 10 meters out to try and get to. And obviously like you can you can go for bigger plays. You can try and like throw the ball 40 yards down the field and if you run with the ball, yeah, you can run with the ball like maybe 80 yards. Anything can happen. But before actually going for the entire touchdown and always going for a play that will score but down the field, you do want to make sure that like your offense is out on the field and you want to put together a drive. A drive is the string of plays you have on offense that go down the field and lead to uh, your offense state being taken off the field, whether that's because you were able to score or because you were not able to score. So uh, every stint that your offense is on the field and it goes down uh, and it stays until your offense gets taken off the field. That is referred to as a drive and the drive is made up of plays. So we have the plays. I've explained how plays stop. Um, oh, how to how a play gets stopped. There are a few different ways. First is if you have a throw and the throw is incomplete. So if the offense tries to throw the ball and no one catches it, it just hits the ground or it goes out of bounds. Then the play is over. You've basically lost that attempt gain no yardage. Then the other way is if you are a player that has the ball on offense and you get tackled by a person on the defensive team and there's like specific parts of your body that must touch the ground for you to be deemed down. Um, it either has to be
just tackle them before they get to the end zone and try and force the other team's offense off the field and get them to uh, essentially get, oh, okay, yeah, I know I need to go next. Uh, you want them to give up on offense, basically. And so, as I mentioned, there's four downs. I never talked about what happens if you don't get the first down. So, on first down, let's say you get five yards. Second down, let's say you get one yard. So now it's third and four. And then on third down, you only get three yards. And that leads you to your fourth down opportunity. It is fourth down and you have one yard to go. Here is where you have a tricky dilemma. So in football, if you do not pick up the first down on your fourth down attempt, wherever you fail, the other team's offense will start from right there. So it can be very risky because you are walking away with not only no points on the board, but you could be surrendering, surrendering very good field position to your other team. So if I'm the Patriots and I'm at my 25 yard line and in my first three plays, I only get nine yards. I'm now at my own 34 yard line, meaning I have 66 yards left to go to try and score. But if I fail here, let's say I go for it on fourth down, if I fail, other team will take over at their my 34 yard line meaning they only have 34 yards to go and then they can score a touchdown which is very bad so because fourth down is very risky and you don't want to give the opposing team a good field position you can do this thing called bunting bunting is a strategy that allows you to flip the field it's like essentially down and instead kicking the ball as far away in the other direction to try and worsen your opposing team's starting offensive position. So if I'm at the 34 yard line and I know that it's way too risky to try and get that last yard, I will opt to punt. So what that means is I will give it to the deep punter. He will drop kick the ball as far as he can and then let's say the punt goes 55 yards. That's like a good punt distance. Uh, 34 plus 55 is 89 it will end up on the opponent's 11 yard line so instead of them starting at my 34 they will now be catching the ball at the 11 yard line in their own territory and now the punt returner on the other team the guy who's catching the ball he does have the option to try and like catch the ball and run forward with it so you have to be careful you have to make sure that you're punting it far but you're also like good on punt coverage so that you can stop the guy who catches it. Um, but the, the strategy behind punting is to put your opponent in an unfavorable position to start their offense. Let's talk about how a good offense and a good defense is measured. Uh, the way that you could quantify if an offense or a defense is good is more or less pretty simple. For offense, you can break it into three things. Four things, maybe. Um, first up is how many passing yards they get per game in the average game. How far down the field are they able to move the ball using a passing play? Then, how many rushing yards they get per game and this number of total yards that they gain per game by uh, having people rush the football, which means they they simply grab it and run with it. There's no passing involved. So those are the two like big yardage based indicators of if an offense is good. Now, being able to move the football is important, but being able to s score is arguably more important because ultimately it's scoring that will allow you to uh, get more points than your opponent and win games. So the third metric is how many points do you put up per game? third down 
existence is pure enough and that their team can accomplish it without like giving up too much or so but I'd say like 95% of the time if a team does not convert on third down they're going to run the ball so being able to convert your third downs third down conversion percentage is a like valued metric for an offense and then on the defensive side you have just the exact opposite parameters and uh, ways to tell um, if a defense is good. It's how many passing yards they allow per game, how many rushing yards they allow per game, how many points they allow per game, and the third down efficiency they allow. If they're allowing their opponent to convert on third down at a very high rate, that means the defense is not good at getting the other offense off the field. So that is, that reflects poorly on them. If the opposing third down efficiency rate is very low. That means the defense does a good job of like tightening up on third down and making sure that they aren't allowing the other offense to continue their play and essentially forces them off the field and gets their offense another chance. Then uh, another way that you can measure if a defense is good is by its ability to create turnovers and there are three ways to turn the ball over. One is called a fumble, one is called a interception, and one is a turnover on downs. The turnover on downs is the one that we've already gone over. It basically means that the other team lined up for a fourth down play, and they were not able to get the first down. So if, as the defense, you stop the other team from picking up the first down on their fourth down attempt, that is a turnover on downs, meaning that your offense will take over wherever they failed from, and that is credit of the defense. Then a fumble is when a player on the offense has possession of the ball and is like running around with it or is just holding it and a player from the defense comes and knocks it loose before that player is marked down by contact. So let's say that like I'm on the offense and I'm running with it and I'm being tackled like I'm in the midst of being tackled so I'm falling forward with the ball in my arms. If another player is right there and they punch the ball out of my hands before I have actually hit the ground, then the ball is loose. It is considered a live ball. The play is live and whoever recovers this football has possession of it. So the defense, if the defense knocked it out, if another defensive player can get a hold of this football, then now the defense is in control turnovers is the play continues like it's not like it stops just because the ball got turned over um the defense can fully pick it up and try and run the other way to score a touchdown defensive touchdowns are something that can occur so it, it's not as valued of a stat because it is more rare but if your defense can generate points that is also a way to measure if they're good Usually it's unlikely that your defense is actually scoring that often. But if they are really good at creating turnovers and then scoring off of those turnovers, then yeah, absolutely, that's considered a like, good marker of a good defense. And so that is the fumble. The other way, the third and final way that a defense can create a turnover is called the interception. This is when the offense is trying to pass the ball some other player on the offense and a defensive player catches it instead so maybe the ball was tipped maybe it was like knocked loose uh, or maybe it just it was a bad throw and it went completely to a defensive player instead of an offensive player that defensive player who caught the ball now has you know gained possession for their team they're also free to run around and try and go score a touchdown and so able to generate turnovers as a defense, that is very valuable. If you're able to get third down stops, that is valuable. If you're able to score as a defense, that is valuable. And I'd say the last way that defensive production is measured is by this thing called the sack. Um, and the way the sack works is in football, there is an imaginary line that separates the offense and the defense. Let's say I'm the base.
Patriots once again on the 25 yard line. My team has the ball here. The ball is here. There's an imaginary line called the line of scrimmage. And the line of scrimmage determines what side the offense is on and what side the defense is on. All players on the offense must be behind the line of scrimmage. And all players on defense must be ahead of the line of scrimmage. Once the ball is moved, once it is snapped, ing indicating that play has begun, that the play has started, now people are free to run wherever. So defensive players will try and charge at the offense and um, get a sack. And sacking is when you stop the offense behind their own line of scrimmage. So I'll explain the positions in just a second. Basically, there's this player called the quarterback. The quarterback is the guy who's passing the ball. If you, as a defensive player, are able to tackle the quarterback behind the line of scrimmage, meaning that the play will result in negative yards for the offense. Not only did they not move the ball forward, but they actually got tackled behind where they were, so they lose yardage. Uh, that is very good of the defense to do, because it is making it harder. Their next down gets harder. They have to pick up more distance to get the first down. They're further away from the end zone. And always um, a sack is extremely helpful on the defensive effort to prevent the offense. So, yeah, that is, I would say, the last thing that is used to measure defensive strength. You've got number of sacks, number of turnovers created, the amount of passing yards they allow, the amount of rushing yards they allow, their down percentage. Those are all the like most important metrics for defense and then again for offense. Yeah, how many yards you can pick up per game, how many uh, points you put up per game, and then I'd say third down efficiency and maybe fourth down efficiency. And yeah, I guess how often you turn the ball over. I don't think people really hold that against the offense as much. Uh, you're still considered a good offensive team, even if you do turn the ball over. It's more seen as something that you can limit. Um, whereas, I mean, a good defense, you, you can be a good defense without generating turnovers, but they usually go in and in. Let's talk about the actual positions in football. to the game in football, and these three phases have completely unique personnel from one another. It's not like other sports where your players will go out and they will be expected to play both offense and defense. They're completely separate teams and people all with completely different rules. So the average football team will have 53 people, at least in the NFL. It is referred to as the 53-man roster. On the field at any given moment, there are 22 players, and it will be 11 players from each team. So one team will have their offense out, 11 players, and they'll be met with 11 defensive players. But as I said, there are three phases to the game, not just two. There's offense, there's defense, and then there's a third phase of the game called special teams. Uh, this is a special unit that has to deal more with, like, kicking, basically. Um, so... On offense, we'll start with the, the heart of the offense. This is the... Actually, let's not start with the heart of the offense. Let's start with the offensive line. The offensive line is a group of five guys, big, burly dudes, that are meant to block for the quarterback. They are led by a center. A center is the middle of the five guys. Snapping the ball. So he will have the quarterback stand right behind him, and when the quarterback gives him the signal, he will take the ball off the ground and give it to the quarterback in between his legs. That is called a snap or a hike. Um, then on either end of the center will be the guards. You have the right guard and the left guard. These guys are big guys, and after the ball is snapped, they basically from the three-point stance, and they're blocking, trying to create running lanes for the offense to run the ball, or just trying to make sure that the defense does not sack the quarterback. Then, on either ends of the guards, at the end of the offensive line, you have the tackles, the left tackle and the right tackle. These guys, uh, they're also, their main job is to protect the quarterback, to create running lanes, 
perhaps more dealing with the like the guys who like to sack because the people who are more prone to getting sacks are going to be the ones on the edge. They're going to try and run around the edge of the offensive line and towards the quarterback. So the tackles are very important, especially the left tackle because just based on percentage of the right-handed people in the NFL and just in in life, um, when someone goes to throw. you 
is called the tight end. The tight end is a hybrid position that is a mix between an offensive lineman and a wide receiver. So this person will be like a bigger and stockier guy that can catch the ball. They are able to run around, like go down the field and catch something, but they also do line up on the offensive line and provide more running protection. So they will help with blocking. And then, you know, some tight ends are better at blocking, some tight ends are better at catching, but usually they will be a larger being than a wide receiver. And so yeah, that is all of the offensive positions in football. Um, we can move into defense. Defense is basically made to counteract the offense, so they have a bunch of like counter positions. For the offensive line, you have the defensive line, which is made up of defensive tackles and defensive ends. The defensive tackles line up across from the center and the guards, and their job is to stop the run. They're also going to be big guys. They're going to try and get to the quarterback, but they're usually much heavier and not as fast. Um, and so they're just like these big dudes that are meant to take up space and make it hard for the opposing team to run the ball through the middle of the field. Then you have the defensive ends. These are the guys that line up across from the offensive tackles on the edge of the defensive line. They are usually more athletic and more fast, and their job is to try and get around the offensive line and sack the quarterback. They also obviously do help out with stopping the run if the running back gets it, and they're trying to, uh, yeah, just like create negative yardage yardage plays for the offense, basically. Um, then, behind the defensive line, you have the linebackers, and linebackers are middle linebackers and outside linebackers. A middle linebacker is more in the middle of the field, and their job is to, um, well, a linebacker's job in general is to help with pass coverage for short and intermediate routes. So if, like, a running running like five yards and then they're running across the middle of the field. It'll be most likely a linebacker who ends up making the tackle. And then if any running play gets past the offensive line and the defensive line, once the running back is out of there, then it's the linebackers who will be trying to make the tackle. And so, position than the defensive line. They'll be big, strong dudes, um, but they're not as, they're not as thin as some of the other people on the defense, um, because they do have to do a lot of contact. They, they're usually the guys that get the most tackles on the team, on the defensive side, so they're like big, strong dudes that can also run fast, uh, and they won't be quite as big as the defensive ends. The defensive ends are still like larger human beings. Then, after that, you've got the, the defensive backs. The defensive backs are split between safeties and cornerbacks. Cornerbacks are the, like, lightest, smallest guys on the defense because they need to be agile uh, as their main job is to cover the wide receivers. They are going to be trailing them. They're going to be trying to prevent catches, and then if catches happen, they're in charge of tackling the wide receivers and stopping them before they get to the end zone. But usually they will, like, their, their job is to cover wide receivers. Then you have the safeties. There's a free safety and there's a strong safety, usually. The free safety, their job is to be the last line of defense for the team. So they will play the furthest down the field and they will try and prevent any big plays, like big throwing plays, from materializing. So if the ball is traveling to the air, to say like the left side of the field and the free safety sees this, they're going to be rushing over to that same side to either uh, bat the ball down or intercept the ball or at the very least make the tackle if the wide receiver happens to catch it and is not being covered by their cornerback. Then the strong safety on the other hand, they are more in charge of like making sure the tight end doesn't go too deep because the tight end, you know, they're more of a blocker. The 
testosterone safety is a bit stronger and more contact heavy. Um, and so if the tight end is running a deeper route, like down the field, it will most likely be the safety that will help pick them up in the intermediate routes and things like that. If the tight end is running, then it will be a linebacker that covers them. And so linebackers in strong safeties, they are usually uh, bigger, more muscly dudes, whereas free safeties and cornerbacks can be more agile and lightweight. And yeah, they're, as far as like their objectives, defensive backs are most likely the ones that are going to get interceptions. Um, defensive linemen and linebackers are typically the ones that get fumbles. Uh, obviously anyone can do these things, but it's like Usually when the ball is thrown, it's thrown towards a wide receiver, so a defensive back intercepts. And then running the ball, most of that does happen through the middle of the field where the D-line and the linebackers are, so usually they get the fumbles. Now, uh, any position can make a run at the quarterback. So you have your defensive line and you have your... they are all always there. But when a player that is not part of the defensive line, say a linebacker or a safety or even a cornerback, if instead of dropping into coverage when the ball is snapped, they make a beeline for the quarterback. That is called a blitz. That is when you are sending more defensive players to rush after the quarterback than uh, your like, regular set amount. So, that's just an important term. And finally, let's talk about specialty. for the 
Snapper, but on the edge of the line of scrimmage, you're also gonna. 
results in a penalty. And then, punt returners can also allow the ball to travel into the end zone um, if the punter has kicked the ball too far, and instead of staying in the field of play, it goes into the end zone, then it is called a touchback. A touchback means that the ball will automatically be placed at either the 25-yard line or the 20-yard line for the opposing team's offense. And then, defensively, uh, or like, on special teams, if you are the punting team, part of your goal is to try and keep the ball out of the end zone. So let's say that the punt returner has waved the ball off. They have decided, I'm not going to touch it because I think that this is going to go into the end zone and we're automatically going to get a touchback. The gunners, they're going to try and run down the field and stop the ball before it gets into the end zone. And so wherever the team that is kicking first touches the football, the other team will take over from there. So, uh, like, if the punt travels and it bounces at the five-yard line, and now it is, like, slowly bobbling its way into the end zone, if the gunner is able to get there and stop it before it gets into the end zone, then the other team, their offense will have to start at, like, the one-yard line or the two-yard line. So, special teams is either when you're kicking the ball or you're flipping the field uh, in terms of position. So, special teams is very important in determining how good either your starting position will will be for your offense, or how bad the other team's starting position will be for their offense, and so it is a very valuable aspect of the game as well. Um, and then the last special teams unit there is, is the, the kickoff. So you have your kicker. Punts occur when it is fourth down and you don't want to go for it, but after a team has scored the football or to begin the game, or to begin the second half, there's this thing called the kickoff. It basically involves everyone on the kicking team to line up on the line, and the kicker to line up five yards back. The kicker will run up to the ball and just kick it as far as they can, and then the entire kicking team will run down the field trying to get to it. And then on the receiving team, everyone on the receiving team will line up on the line, except for like maybe one or two guys who are all the way deep, ready to receive the kick. And then it'll just be like war, basically. It'll just be two teams running at each other um, with the receiving team trying to send out blockers so that their kick returner can go as far as he can. Uh, and then the, the kicking team is trying their best to tackle the kick returner and make sure that they don't get a good field position or score the touchdown. Um, kick returns and punt returns, if the returner is talented enough and fast enough to get to the end zone, they can score a touchdown off of it, so it's definitely more rare, but you can score special teams touchdowns, and yeah, that should be all of the special teams players in uh, situations when they are brought out. You've got the kicker, you've got the punter, you've got the holder, and you've got the long snapper. Uh, this is really the only special... Oh, and the gunners. Yeah. Now let's just briefly go over the anatomy of a game. So if you ever come across like an NFL game, this is how you would watch it. First up, you've got the coin toss. So to start a game, the first thing that happens is the coin toss. The coin toss, game captains will go to the middle of the field. Uh, they will meet with the referee who will have a coin with a heads and a tail. The referee will flip the coin, and the away team gets to choose what they want the coin toss call to be. So if they get it correct, now they get to pick from four options. Receiving the ball, uh, deferring, choosing what side, and kicking. If, if you win the coin toss, ordinarily you will pick between deferring or receiving. Receiving the ball means you want to start with your offense to start the game, so the other team will kick off to you. You will use your kick returner to catch it, and then your offense will be the first offense on the on the field. If you defer, what it means is you will kick off to start the game, so your defense will start out the game. But in the second half, you will receive the kickoff. So, 
basically it's just like you know swap between offense and defense one team's offense will take the field or they'll go out if they don't score uh, like if they don't go down the field they'll bump to the other team and then that team will take over on offense and vice versa they'll just keep going back and forth after a team scores then they will have to send out their kicking unit and kick off Whichever team is in the lead uh, will win when the time expires. If both teams are tied, then it will go into overtime. Overtime is a period where you get 10 more minutes to try and figure out which team is going to win the game. Uh, both teams have the opportunity to try and score to win it. It's like sudden death. But if the first team to touch the ball scores a touchdown, they just win. So if you receive the over the overtime kickoff and you score a touchdown, you automatically win. If you only score a field goal or you don't score and the other team scores a touchdown, they will win. If both teams just score a field goal, then the game will continue until the next score, any kind of score. Um, and if at the end of the 10 minute period, no team was able to win via sudden death, then the game will end in a tie. Regular season games can end in a tie. Um, overtime games cannot. They will just keep playing extended periods until one team is declared the winner. Um, I think that is basically everything uh, that I can think of. There are just a few like a few details to football that I should explain. One of them is safeties. Safety is this. The ways to score in football are touchdowns, field goals, point after. Uh, but the fourth and final way that you can score is through the defense. And that is the defense getting a safety. What that means is when the offense is pushed so far into their own territory that someone on the offense gets the ball and they get tackled in their own end zone, that is uh, a safety. So it gives the defensive team two points, and it gives them possession. So one thing about the defense is if the defense scores a touchdown, if they manage to get, to it, get an interception and score a touchdown, they will be awarded six points, and then however many points they choose to go for, whether one point or two points. But after that, they So you scored, but you don't get possession just because you scored. Safety is different. Safety, you get two points and your team gets possession. So it is very big, but it's also very rare. Like, you hardly ever see safeties in the NFL. Um, then another thing is uh, being in bounds. Uh, to be in bounds in football, you have to get two feet down. soccer where like the ball can be in but your body can be out if any part of you um is touching like the line of out of bounds then you are out you're marked out so when you catch the ball you have to maintain possession you have to like show that you're controlling the football and you have to get two feet within bounds before you're allowed to go out of bounds um for it to be counted as a catch specific rules and stuff but just know like there are a bunch of rules in football and if you break a rule you'll be penalized uh, there's a flag a yellow flag that gets thrown out um, and then with that I'll also explain challenges challenges are when um, a team does not like the decision that the referees have come to and maybe it's on a, a, about a scoring play or about a turnover then they will choose to challenge it strategy as I was talking about there are ways to stop the ball uh, and there's ways to continue the clock rolling so depending on where your team is 
at the end of the game, if your team is up by a lot at the end of the game, they will want the clock to continue rolling so that they can run the clock out and the other team has as little time to work with as possible so they can't catch up. So one strategy that you can use when you're up uh, is to nail the ball. Uh, this is sometimes called victory formation. Basically what it means is you know that in your next set of downs, if you just take the ball and you surrender yourself to the quarterback, instead of like trying to go for any productive play, steps two yards back and then puts his knee on the ground, it's considered being like tackled. And so the clock will continue to run for 40 seconds because uh, there's a play clock of 40 seconds. And by then you have to snap the ball again. And so you can waste 40 seconds by doing that. And if mathematically, the other team cannot stop you from fully running out the clock from your kneel downs, then that is victory formation. That means you can just win the game by repeatedly kneeling and then running the entire clock out. It's not always the most glorious or fun way to end the game, but it is very strate strategically smart to do. Then on the opposite end of that, if you are down, if you're out of timeouts and you need to stop the clock so that you can like score as much as you can, as fast as you can. You can s you can spike the ball. Spiking the ball is taking the ball and throwing it directly into the ground intentionally because incomplete passes stop the clock. So it's basically giving up on your down so that you can have the clock stop. Uh, and that is very important in like late game situations when you're the team that is trailing. speed 